And I don't know if I'm going to get married, but I feel so good because I'm, I'm free. But some years later, Jesus called me, no more free anymore. Then I met my wife, the one that is my wife now, no more free. <laughs> and I'm saying this because the title of my message is, the message is on the wall. And Israel is captive in Babylon. 70 years of captivity. This is a life. Probably children were born in the exile, in the captivity, in a strange country with a different culture and different language. It was so hard. So no freedom for Israel at this time. And the king, Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, is celebrating. Sire, happy, thinking we are so powerful, the number one empire in the world. We are the best. And the powerful Babylon, but the powerful Babylon is about to be Josh. That's the thing that he didn't know. And he's celebrating a feast. But this was more than a feast. It was a blasphemous feast. In Daniel chapter 5, verse 1, we read that Belshazzar the king held a great feast. It wasn't only a feast. It was a great feast for a thousand of his nobles. And, his, and he was drinking wine. In the presence of the thousand. He was so happy. We are the most powerful empire in the world. And we are celebrating. He congregates nobles. And this is the aristocratic people. Or people that belongs to the kingdom. People of the high social class. I social and political status. They are gathered together celebrating the feast. So the king and his friends are celebrating. But Babylon, the great empire, they are celebrating so excited. But they are not imagining that the empire is going to be falling some hours later. An empire with a beautiful houses in a gray walls. When we see right here, uh, the picture in the screen of the, of the wall, these are the walls that were around the city of Babylon. And the Bible, and not the Bible, but the story says that this wall were ab about some 17 miles long all around and the why or the width of these walls it was about 22 feet was too difficult to penetrate. 22 feet width. And the height, it was 90 feet. Believe me, I have been, I'm a painter, house painter, and I have been painting in about 47 feet ladder. And that's scary to be over there. That's scary. When I am in the, in the 16, 17 feet, I don't tight myself. Sometimes I am holding me only with one hand, and sometimes I'm not holding me when I'm doing something. I, I know me myself, I know my tools, I'm not so scared. 
but I was in San Francisco painting the building over there of the Church of, Church of Christ in Uptown. That had been, for me, the most difficult job to do on the high. I had to use 17 feet ladder and I had to add one more and tie it up and going even to the top of the other one. It was crazy. I had to time it myself. And these walls, when I was checking in the website, this wall, it was 90 feet. Hey, so high. So that's the reason that the king, Belshazzar, was so relaxed. The enemies were outside. And he was so relaxed. It's impossible. Impossible that the enemy get into the city. It's not possible. But behind that, it was God. And for God, nothing is impossible. People that build the Titanic said, nothing is going to sink the Titanic. No God, even God. An iceberg was waiting for the Titanic. And we know the rest of the story. A dictator in South America said, I curse God and Israel and the people of God from the belly of, of my body. I curse. He got cancer. Years later, he got cancer in his belly. And he died. We need to be very careful. If we are trusting in material things, in powers, in armies, we are thinking in the wrong way. That was the big mistake of the king. Big mistake celebrating a feast that was more than a feast. And he thought it's impossible. We got a, a good army, a good a great wall around the city is not going to be possible. And nine, I said 90 feet height of the walls plus the towers. We can see the towers. The towers were 100 feet more higher. And there were guards watching to outside. Let's continue celebrating. Nothing is going to happen. But we're going to see later what's going to happen. It's impossible to be safe in sin. Are we safe in sin? No. We are not safe in sin. The king and his friend felt safe in sin. This was more than a feast. Some uh, teachers and preachers called this feast Orgy, orgy feast. He congregated nobles, his wives, con concubines. At the beginning, we read in the Bible that God, the creator, only create one wife for the man. But in the following chapter, we see that Lamech took two wives. And now we see the corruption of the marriage. But at the beginning, God created in the right way. And we believe in one creator, we're going to be believing in the book of the creator. That is the Bible. We need to respect this book. So, he felt safe, but we are not safe in sin. It's impossible to be safe in, in sin. No one is safe in sin. Not the king. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The salary or the reward if we, are, if we continue practicing sin is going to be death. The devil is deceiving us. He's promising another thing, but that's not true. The Bible clearly says that the wages of sin is death. But in the other 
Psi on the other way, God said that the free gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life, not in ourselves, not in Buddha, not in Mohammed, but in Christ Jesus, and this Jesus is our Lord, is our Lord. Is worthy of worship or praising. Is eternal life. And this is something free. But free doesn't mean that there are no conditions. Free means that it's for everybody. And we only need to follow some rules that this Lord has established. But we, it's impossible to be safe in sin. If we are sinning and sinning and sinning, sooner or later, we are going to give account of that sin. And we're going to perish. That's what Jesus said in Luke chapter, thir- chapter 13. If you don't repent, you'll perish. And that was the biggest mistake of the king. We have some problems with the technology. And he continued making a big mistake. When he is drunk, he says, we can read it. I have the Bible, the plan B. I got it right here with me. Uh, Daniel chapter 5. Verse 2 and verse 4. When Belshazzar tastes the wine, he gave orders to bring the gold and silver vessels which Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, so that the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. They drank the wine and praise the gods of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. We said that it's impossible to be safe in sin. This king, when he was drunk, he started making more mistakes. He gave an order. Bring all the sacred, all the vessels that belong to the God of Israel that my father, Nebuchadnezzar, when he conquered the kingdom over there, he destroyed the temple and he stole those sacred vessels or cups that belong to God in the temple and you know what? Only the priests were able or allowed to use this vessel. Not everybody, not all the children of Israel, only the priests. But now he's mocking, he's blaspheming, he's trying, he's mocking of the only and true God. That was a terrible mistake. Bring me the vessels. And he started to celebrate, to continue drinking wine, and said, Or God, or God made or, give, or gave to us all the triumphs, all everything, all the power that we have. Like an empire is because of God. What kind of God? God of gold, silver, wood, iron, stone. Or gods. And they continue drinking. Drunkenness leads to foolish things. For Noah, drunkenness was equal to nakedness. You remember that?
alcohol is our biggest problem of addiction. Alcohol kills 25% of people more than the others illegal drugs. Unfortunately, not all drugs, or some kind of drugs. So there are some drugs that are not illegal anymore. But anyway, alcohol is killing 25% more than other drugs. And for me, alcohol is also a drug. Because a people with one beer in his head, or one cup of wine in his head, it th is thinking different. And I always think this, and I ask myself, or ask yourself, you're gonna take a flight, for example, from San Jose to LA, and you see the pilot drinking a beer, what do you think? The pilot drinking just one beer, and you're gonna take that flight. Oh, what's wrong here? But what? Why wrong? It's only one beer. But only one beer changed our minds. We don't need that. We don't need it. This king. When he starts drinking, drinking and drinking more, his brain starts changing more and more. The vessel, he has been over there for some time, for many years. But now that he's making this feast, and now that he's drunk it, he said, he gives the orders, bring me the vessels. And he starts drinking more and more and more. And now that was the big problem. Alcohol is the number one cause of crimes in the United States. It's the number one, the alcohol. And people try to justify, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know. It's not an excuse. I'm gonna go to the jail. You need to pay for that. The king could say, oh, I was so drunk. That's the reason that I took the sacred vessels. He knew about the only one and true God because he heard the story of his father, Nebuchadnezzar. God punished Nebuchadnezzar, sent him to be eating grass like a wild cattle. And he knew that, but he didn't care. But the Bible said, Daniel told to this king, to Belshazzar, God, the only true God, punished your father. But he repented and humbled himself. But you are so arrogant. You have been so arrogant. It's not possible to be using is only a building. We are the church of Christ, all the members. But anyway, we can be using this play for feast, for party, for be dancing, for renting. What happens if we don't have too much money or the contributions and we need to be we need to be paying the bills of the building? And we think the elder said. Oh, you know what? Let's put it to the rent. And we can rent it once in a while and to get more money. But the people of the world is going to be using this one by a market. We're going to be using this one to make parties. What do you think? Is, is a good idea, that one? Is that a good idea? Of course not. Of course not. This vessel were only for praising and worship God. Only for that, he was mocking 
o God. That's when we see the wrath of God. The divine warning. Daniel chapter 5 verse 5. Suddenly the fingers of a man's hand emerged and began writing opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the back of the hand that did the writing. That was the wrath of God. The Lord God manifests in different ways. You remember when he manifests to Moses in a burning bush. Burning bush, he was talking to the prophet. Now, one hand appeared and he started writing down on the walls. That was the divine warning. God is saying, this is enough. This is enough. It's not possible. I'm going to stop this man. And the king. We see that the king now is scared. The king is trembling. His knees are knocking one to the other. He was pale. His whole body, the Bible says, in the following verse, was shaking, confused, troubled. Why? In the verse, in the verse before, he was mocking of God, giving the glory to his God. Where are his gods? Why are not his God defending king or protecting king? Even people that is without God and don't believe in God, in their heart, they know that there is a God. They don't want to recognize that there is a God, but there is a God. They know. He knew, he knew that this was something different. A hand. It's not a hand of the iron God. It's not a kind of the gold or silver gods. This is something different. And he probably thought, probably this is the hand of the Jehovah God. The Bible it doesn't say that was the hand of God. Only a, that a hand appeared. Probably God only used a hand. He got the power to do that. Or he could use an angel to write it down. Something like that. But he is confused, troubled, and now we need to solve this to try to find the solution. Call me, bring me the wise people of Babylon. When we are in the war, we are trying to solve everything to our way. The solution it was over there in the kingdom. The man of God was over there in the kingdom. But he's not calling for the man of God. He don't care about God. He's trusting in his people. And he said, the reward. He's offering one reward. I'm going to cloud with a purple cloth, gold, necklace, and the third position in the kingdom. Why not the second position? Maybe because he have already gave the second position to somebody else. Or maybe he only got the second position for himself. But he's offering, anyway, a good reward. Daniel said, keep it with you. I don't need that. The empire or the kingdom is going to fall down. Some hours later, I don't need that. I don't care about that. But he is so confused. And some teacher said, Why did God scare this king to the point? God scared 
this king to the point where he wet himself. He wet himself. Why did God did, did this to the king? To remind king that God is there. God is there. To remind this king that God is in charge. No any man is in charge. Is God the number one that is in charge of everything? Sin is going to be judged. Brothers and sisters, there is a point. There is a point where sin is judged. God is so patient, so kind. But his patience is not forever. 120 years gave to the people in the days of Noah. He saw that the weakness was so great on earth. Was so great. Not great. So great. Extremely great. People just sinning and sinning and sinning. And the Lord said, enough is enough. 120 years. And that's it. And he sent. The flood. While Noah was. Building the ark. People was mocking of him. Laughing of him. Let's continue. We are doing the right things. We are in the right one. In the true and only one God. So sin is going to be judged. It's the time when it's going to be judged. So that's the point right here. God said, that is enough. I'm going to stop this. So, that's when we're going to see the message of the Lord. Thanks to bro Brother Ed for the scripture reading. Many, many take care of far sin. Many God have number and count your kingdom. And he put it an end to it. And take care of God have weighed you. In the scale. And you are king. King. You are deficient. God is waiting everyone. For the human beings. And we are. We are, we are deficient. He's going to judge. And. Who far seen. It's like to say. Division. This king. Now is going to. Fall down. Is going to be divided. Another kingdom is outside of the great wars attacking, and they are going to get in. Right here, you're going to be slain or killed tonight. And this kingdom is going to fall down tonight. That was the wrath of the Lord. And the king, the king died that night. Daniel was the third ruler only for some hours in that kingdom. But he didn't care about that. He didn't care. When he heard the offer, he said to the king, keep it for yourself. In the conclusion, brothers and sisters, the message of God for us is right here. It's in the Bible. We don't, we don't need to hear or wait for dreams or revelations. The message of God for us is right here. This is right here is the message of salvation. The Lord Jesus said, search the scriptures. Because you think you have eternal life on them. 
And the scripture, Jesus said, ah, Jesus said, they testify of me. So the message of God for us is in the Bible. And the message of salvation is believe and be baptized. And Jesus said, and you shall be saved. If you don't believe, you will perish. Two things. Believe and be baptized. But only we need only one thing to go to hell. Now believe. The lesson is for you this morning. God bless everyone.